I'd like to invite everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'd like to invite Kyle Foreman from right there. You can do it. Start off by saying, I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There you go. That was painless, wasn't it? We got you in the record. Okay, welcome everyone to the first meeting in November. Uh, Gene Brumall is on vacation this week, and uh, there's Lou George. He's looking good on the Zoom meeting. He's with us by via Zoom. Uh, minutes of October 16th. We have a motion to approve the minutes of October 16th. We have a motion second. and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Financial report and payment of the bills. We have a motion to approve the financial report. So moved. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion on the financial report? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, we have a budget amendment 2025-013. It's for the purpose of transferring 28857 from the American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA funds, to the Water Fund for payment of invoice <laughs> related to the Well House Number 4 project. We have a motion to approve that budget amendment. So we have a motion and a second. We have a motion to approve budget amendment 2025-013. Is there any discussion on it? Tamika, do you have anything to add to that? No. Very good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Elton Police Department, Chief Rogers, come on down or Hello. tell us what you got. Okay. It's just a brief. Good evening. Good evening to you. So every year we typically apply for a justice assistance grant and there's basically an allocation. So there's a set amount of money um, that the federal government sets aside for us specifically, but it's also a joint, it has to be a joint application with Cecil County Sheriff's Department. You guys may have remembered this in the past. This year our share of that is going to be just over $5,000, and $5,934 actually. We want to use that, those funds to replace our existing holsters. We've had some failures with these holsters, and it was really um, highlighted when we did some defensive tactics training earlier in the year, where the guns kind of came out. And they're supposed to be level three holsters to keep it in and secure a weapon. But, uh, so we contacted the company, there was a recall and there was a, some kind of fix. And we tried that, uh, but we continued to do this training and so we've had some more failures. So what we're looking to do is replace them with one that's fully molded. It's from the same company, it's just a different series, um, and it'll fit. We just, we got these guns with the, um, the red dot opticals on them and the flashlight. So there's very limited options for web, for um, the holsters. And um, so that's what we're hoping to use the money for. We'll take the remaining money either out of our, um, our armory budget or if we need to use asset seizure <coughs> funds, we'll do that if you, if you guys are in a, agreement with this. How many holsters are you talking? We're looking at, I believe it's 60. Yes, a total of 60. Okay, thanks. Very good. Does anyone on the board have any questions? <coughs> any comments? I don't okay. see any reason why you can't move forward with it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, Lou George, you are on. Can you hear me all right? We can hear you. Uh, Proclamation 60, 2024. Municipal government. Can that be the up, proclamation uh, from Aaron Commission of the Town of Elton declaring the month of November 2024, Municipal Government Works Month with the Town of Elkton. Whereas the Town of Elkton was established as Cecil County's seat in 1787 and has evolved as Cecil County's largest and most progressive municipality. And whereas Elkton joined 156 other municipalities in Maryland who proudly serve their respective residents and business communities. And whereas Municipal Government represents the most responsive level, responsive level of government allowing citizens direct access to their elected officials, observe the operations of their government, 
and benefit from the many services provided by their government. And whereas in an effort to educate citizens about municipal government and the importance of their participation, the town of Elkton is proud to promote municipal government awareness. And whereas municipalities have enhanced the quality of life for their respective residents by providing essential governmental services, maintaining access to safe drinking water and providing for wastewater treatment, maintaining parks and supporting recreation activities, promoting economic development and job opportunities, and supporting local business, along with providing many other services and opportunities that help make Elkin a great place to live, work, and enjoy. Now therefore be it proclaimed that the Mayor and Commission of the Town of Elkton hereby, pro hereby proclaim the month of November 2024 as Municipal Government Works Month in the Town of Elkton. We have a motion to approve Proclamation P60-2024, Municipal Government Works Week. So mm -hmm. month. We got a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion on it? Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe next year when this comes about again, maybe it'd be nice to send a handout, a flyer, or some sort of communication to maybe schools, uh, nonprofits, and others. I mean, they see us function as a government, and they might know that, but... The more communication you get, the better it becomes. I think it's a great idea, Charles. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. The okay, next item I have is Ordinance 6, 2024. This is uh, pertaining to the zoning ordinance. It was uh, at a public hearing on October 7th, and it was uh, on the 16th. It was a public hearing and introduction. The uh, the ordinance is up for adoption tonight to be effective and relates to Article 6, Hearing, Procedures for Appeals and Applications, and amends the uh, ordinance accordingly. Uh, Section 5, which is the uh, amendment to this, in indicates a video or audio recording shall be made of all meetings, hearings, excuse me, required by Section 1 of this article, and such recordings shall be kept for at least two years. After minutes shall also be kept of such proceedings, and a transcript will be available upon the filing of an appeal at the cost of the appellant. Whenever practical, all documentary, ev documentary evidence presented at hearing as well as all other types of physical evidence shall be made a part of the record of the proceedings shall be kept by the town for at least two years. Now, therefore, the Mayor and Commission of the Town of Elkton hereby ordain Article 6, Hearing Procedures for Appeals and Applications, Section 5, Record, shall be amended uh, to uh, video recording and transcript will be made upon the filing of an appeal at the cost of the appellant. I recommend that the Board adopt this Ordinance 6, 2024, which will go, we'll advertise it, and it will be in effect within 20 days. We have a motion to uh, approve, uh, presented for adoption, Ordinance 6-2024, amending the Town of Elton Zoning Ordinance, Article 6, Hearing Procedures for Appeals and Applications. So moved. Have a motion? Second. And a second. Any discussion on that? Hearing on all in favor. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, the next Ordinance 7, uh, 2024, it also was a public hearing on the 16th and is presented tonight for an adoption pertaining to the Elton Zoning Ordinance also, Section 12 Supplementary Use Regulations. And pri primarily it uh, pertains to many warehouses. Rather than go through the entire script here, I would recommend that the board consider this. Basically what's happening is that a lot of the storage facilities don't provide adequate uh, screening or, or uh, space or uh, vehicles and things of that nature. Consequently, this amendment provides that opportunity for people who own, or businesses that own, uh, storage <coughs> facilities to have uh, equipment and uh, vehicles or you know things on their property at a more, uh, uh, I think, more opportunity, a better opportunity for them to take access to that versus uh, what, what we have now. But I recommend that the board adopt this ordinance. We have a motion to adopt Ordinance 7-2024, amending the Town of Elton Zoning Ordinance, Article 
12 supplementary use regulations. So moved. A motion and a second. Any discussion on it? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. The last item I have is uh, was the last minute item on the agenda. Utility easement with Delmarva Power and Light. Well, the board is well aware that the uh, town uh, built well number four at 199 Frenchtown Road. And subsequent to that, a 600,000 gallon uh, water tower was built also to serve the South Fields project. Uh, the well house has not uh, been able to operate whatsoever because there's no primary power. Uh, once uh, uh, South Fields was underway, then the next process would be for them to run pre-phase service through South Fields to serve both the pump station that's going to serve South Fields as well as the well house and any other facilities related there too. In order for Delmarva to put the three-phase service to that site, set a transformer, or a switch box, things of that nature that are uh, critical for the operation energy and energizing that station, they need an easement. And this is the easement uh, that I asked the board to consider uh, tonight. And this pertains to the town's well site at 199 Frenchtown Road. And uh, I would ask the board to accept this, otherwise we don't have an operational will. Uh, we have a motion to accept this easement agreement with Delmarva Power and Utility. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. Any discussion on it? Is there any fees for that, uh, Lou? Would that be covered by Opera? Opera, Opera Finance? No, they're paying what, us $1. They're paying us? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, okay, I was reading. Nope. It's a little slice. Nope, That's all right. That was uh, my items on my agenda. So we had a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. All right. First of all, I love the TV. You guys know that beautiful TV up there? Yeah, the lady sitting uh, near it, closest as uh, the one who went out and purchased it. Yeah. I, I think Very it, complimentary. I think uh, the angle makes it look a little bit better. It's easier than, than actually looking at the projector, in my opinion. Uh, everyone knows the election happened yesterday, and uh, here locally, uh, uh, Bob Methley, uh, who's currently serving on the county council, got reelected, and uh, Dawn Branch, uh, she is uh, going to be a new county council person. Um, so we have two new members, and uh, the county executive will be Adam Strait. So we've got. Uh, Two new people in the, in the county government uh, mix of it all, per se. Um, I wanted to make the board aware that uh, we're going to be receiving an increase from Artesian Water. Uh, they received a uh, notice from the Chester Water Authority. Uh, we'll receive that. It uh, doesn't take effect until when, Lou? Do you know that all? April 1st, 2025, it becomes effective. Yeah, so it'll go become effective. Uh, so we have a couple months uh, before our increase in water goes up again. Um, we can or may or may not uh, go along with the increase uh, to our residents, but uh, it's something we have to really look closely at because uh, once again, they've they've increased it to us, and we can't be uh, selling water for less than what it's costing us. Something to take a look at. Um, I see we got Mr. Mike Brown. I see Brad Carrillo online tonight. Uh, can you give me a little update on the project? Do you mind? Which one? <laughs> well, both. Because I understand. <laughs> I understand that the uh, driving range. Driving range is moving finally. Yep, we're pouring concrete tomorrow. Okay. Uh, we have a finish date of uh, March, the end of March, right now. Um, we are waiting on some glue land boards and some uh, some timing of some supplies, but as of right now, our goal is to open on March uh, at the end of March. Uh, things are moving quickly now, so we're really happy. Um, very good. It's a it's a large investment to, uh, in the town. We're very happy to make it, and I'm I'm excited to see uh, how it all turns out. Um, go ahead. And well, then, then I was going to ask you the second project, our partnership on the. Sportsplex, how is that going uh, you know, from your standpoint? Well, I'll tell you, it's, uh, I think it's going well. We're all working very hard to get to the end of this. I know that, uh, you know, in speaking with you, you are as well, and certainly we have enough meetings in the week uh, 
to, for a full-time job for any of us, I believe. So um, we are all working. I think that there is some disparity, uh, which is why we're here tonight to offer up any, um, any explanation that we can. There's some disparity in, in uh, some of what we understand uh, the deal to be that we've worked out, what was agreed to uh, over a year ago that we all were working towards, and, uh, and some of the explanations as they're, as they're being made and, and dis discussed uh, more recently. So um, our goal today was uh, to, to basically make ourselves available if there are any questions real time. Uh, we felt like sometimes there's uh, between meetings with your council and then the ability to meet with us, there's time that passes. As that time passes, uh, it's harder to answer those questions. So if that happens this evening, we'd be happy to answer questions. If not, we're fine. No, I, I, I think uh, I'm going to ask you uh, when we close the meeting tonight, because we, we're going to talk to our attorney tonight. Sure. Uh, uh, she's going to bring us up to date on a few of the other things. Mm -hmm. It may be boring for you, but I'm going to ask you to go out in the other room, maybe stick around. That's fine. And if we, the board, has any direct questions, yep. uh, we're going to come out. Maybe we'll even have John come out and ask the question to you yep. and bring it in. But we don't want you to be with our attorney during this uh, closed process. I understand. I thank you for that. And also, just so you know, we're on the one yard line. We have all done an incredible amount of work to get here. We're thankful for our partnership. I think that we have a couple of items that are left. I don't think these are showstoppers, but uh, as you know, we're running to the, uh, the finish line here, and we didn't want it to be any more delays. Thank it you. was, it was um, you know, when we started this project, uh, or started looking at it, I was looking back uh, today, and it was in 2016, 2017, and the uh, youth travel sports industry was I remember them, it's, them telling, saying it was a, a $3 billion business and it was growing. Today it's over $30 billion and they're projecting by 2028 for it to be like a 60 plus billion dollar industry. I mean it's an amazing, it was one business that really perked up, uh, but it's, a, it's a definitely growing at 8.9% uh, is the, the growth of return on uh, travel sports today. Pretty big number. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Uh, that's all I have, Charles. Um, the other day I went by Southville. Uh, certainly it is, it, is, it is blooming like a flower. Um, that I saw in person as well as Lewis, I guess, sending us some um, pictures of, um, of his choosing about the Southville project. So that is good. To the alternate lions, um, I believe when it came about, there was a mission statement, and I saw in the wig today where basically uh, you are asking for opinion, thoughts about what you would like to do for others or what others should see you doing. Can you bring me up to date on that? Because it's, it's like a quandary. I'm, I'm lost. I'm on one side, then I'm seeing another side. I know the, tap, the mayor and the commissioners, we are thrust in the middle of it someplace because either side is going to affect us, you know, since we do an awful lot uh, for the economic growth of that as well. Please. Can, can we know. bring you up now? Sorry. You can have the floor and do everything you want to do. So thank you for that, Commissioner Gibbons. Um, and I'll give you a little background on that. So the end, middle end of last year, I've been at the organization for six, eight months. And as we went into a strategic planning process, um, our strategic planning partner had went out with similar questions to the community, to our board members, volunteers, etc. So as we completed that strategic planning at the end of last year, the recommendation was given to us that we go out broader to the community to get some answers. You know, are there questions out there about who we are, what we do? Um, how can we how can we collect any concerns um, or kudos either way? and ensure that we are doing, as an organization, what we should be doing for the town of Elkton, the downtown community, the businesses, et cetera. So that was the um, platform for why that community survey was developed and what, why we pushed it out the way we did through um, the WIG helped us with that, through our newsletter, social media, et cetera. So it's really a, a information gathering source to ensure that we're hearing the community we're hearing the challenges, we're hearing the positives, the negatives, all of it, and we can address that as an organization to say, how can we answer those? How can we do better? 
where are the gaps, what are we missing, and how we can, as a board, as an organization, ensure that we're addressing those moving forward. I know you do a good job, and I know you're looking forward to putting a farmer's market in uh, next year that basically uh, we didn't have this year. How many people are on your board? And I ask that question because prior to your taking a position, we would have the director to come in, and sometimes we were overwhelmed with others supporting the director. I know I see you doing a good job, and I see uh, a few others. Uh, that's your number one person behind you sitting. I, I see you all all the time, and I just wonder how much more force do you have coming from others because you can't do it alone. We have 15 board members total. Um, but our volunteer base is growing. Um, we, we had a very tight group of volunteers, Pat, correct me if I'm wrong, um, some that have been with us a very long time, and the goal really is they're tired. And when I came on as the organization's executive director, I said, how do we expand that out? Um, they're not going anywhere. Our, our Really, our sole source of volunteers that have been with us for a while, they're not going anywhere but they're tired of putting six, eight hours into one event, and they want to be able to enjoy it as well and see what they've done for the last X amount of years. So our volunteer base is expanding significantly. I'm always looking for more. We have a volunteer portal on, portal on our site to ensure that we can push that out and we can get some additional um, resources through that the community. So with more volunteers, I guess the six to eight hours would go away in a sense that you have more people to uh, get involved or do you have another answer to their question it would it would if we had more volunteers we could separate out the time that an individual volunteer had to serve on any given event instead of having somebody that's there on the Friday night and all day Saturday of ball fest maybe they could break it up and they could have one or two hour time slots so then they could go out and enjoy the event and see what else is going on and then even be in a position to give us better feedback because they're seeing a broader amount of that event Thank you. I thank you for your work. Thank you for your answer. I'm done. Thank you. Well, uh, you, you, the floor is yours. One, yeah, one, question I, one question I want to ask because I hear it all the time. People are wanting to know, has any interest of bringing any more establishments or, or eating establishments downtown? Because they say that would bring the people down there if we had people that are interested in a restaurant, more food options. Has anybody come to approach? Yeah, we have um, a couple of new businesses that are going to be coming to the town of Upton very soon. Um, certainly with the change of ownership of Spork, they have expanded to seven days a week. Um, and once the name changes and some additional things are happening, they are actually going to extend their hours. We've made some strategic um, partnership meetings with other businesses in Upton to ensure that, for instance, when the music hall has a sold out show, that the whatever sport is going to be called, they will actually be open late on a Friday and Saturday night to ensure that once um, an event is either over or more importantly, before it starts, because with having Central Tavern, if they have a 300 person show, they can't support that from a dinner crowd perspective. So um, the, the new owners of sport have identified that they'll connect with the music hall and have a partnership with them to ensure when they're having a, a sold out show or a larger <coughs> attendance for a show, they're staying open later. But in general, they're also going to be changing their hours to have extended hours versus what they had in the past. And then we do have um, some other additional things that are that will be communicated shortly about some other things. Alicia, do you have any idea about what those extended hours are? I, it will, I don't know for sure. I know they've gone to seven days a week already. They started that last week. And so that's still till 2 o'clock. And then what they're planning is, um, at least initially, when the music hall has a show, they're going to stay open later for that dinner crowd. Beyond that, I don't know what their firm hours are going to be. But not 2 a.m.? No. No. Um, and I, I asked that question. I'm yeah. asking because I had someone had asked me that. The answer is, I've been told the answer is no. That's not the goal. Nothing needs to be open at 2 a.m. I believe Chip, excuse me, may have something to add. Chip? Yes, I uh, met with the people who purchased the PNC Bank. Uh, they were down there last week moving some equipment in there. Uh, they're going to open a cafe. Uh, they plan to open uh, probably next spring. They're busy expanding their uh, 
coffee shop in Rising Sun right now, but they will be opening in the spring. It should be quite a, a, a good addition to the town of Elkton. They're going to open at 7 o'clock in the morning at least. So there will be an early morning coffee shop. Very good. Yeah. Any other questions on those topics before I move on? Yep. Um, so before I ask Kyle to introduce himself, I will give a little background. Um, the Elton Alliance has had a connection with Kyle's family for a number of years. His sister, Courtney, many of you may know, she runs Courtney's Book Drive, has for a while. She initiated the, the program and has been very successful over the years of, of getting donations of books and at least at the Alliance events and other ones I, I know of. Um, she gives out books. She's been at National Night Out and she's been at other things around the community. So through the connection with Courtney and her family, I was introduced to Kyle. Um, and I'll have you go ahead and give an introduction to yourself. Um, hello, my name is uh, Kyle Foreman, and I am here to um, basically ask you to build a little free library for my Eagle Scout project. So Kyle and I were introduced um, again through his family connection, and we were talking about his interest in doing an Eagle Scout project. And um, we specifically talked about a free library that could be in the courtyard of the Alliance. I know many months ago when I first started, I had actually um, approached uh, Lewis and some others here um, around the opportunity for doing so. And Dan was involved and we talked about the needs, you know, getting this utility involved, finding out if there were any challenges. And at that time, I was asked for you know, what it would look like, where it would be, and honestly, other things, priorities just took over. And then when Kyle and I connected and, and he started talking about the opportunity to build something like that, that's why he's here tonight and we're here to address the mayor and commissioners and the staff about the opportunity to do so. Um, why don't you talk about what your role would be in the project? So I would do the fundraising and getting the materials and the installation of the uh, local library in the courtyard. And so he has actually um, looked at options for giving it a historic nature, meaning having it look like the Alliance building, or at least the colors. And, and he's done research around you know, how it would fit in the aesthetics of the Alliance courtyard and the town as a whole. Um, so we're here to basically say he's ready to move on it if um, the town mayor and commissioners would give us that approval. He'll continue to do some work around what it would look like. We would need support from Department of Public Works ensuring that we're not going to install it someplace it shouldn't be and we're not going to have any problems with that. So that would be the resources and the needs that we would ask for for the town. How, how large of a library is this? Uh, about 24 by 24 by 24 inches. Okay. If anyone has seen the one at the Arts Council, um, that's sort of what our vision is around that size. That's pretty And where are you going to locate it? Well, that would depend on what we find out from underground pipes, wires, whatever. My initial thought was having it um, over by the uh, pregnancy center's entrance into the Alliance because that way anybody who was um, had a disability was um, movement challenged, they would be able to get to it versus having it on the other side where the steps are. It, mm -hmm. it would be more of a challenge for people to get up that way. And how would that impede with the uh, uh, music, uh, during the music times you guys have? In the courtyard, you have a setup for musicians yes. that take up the space. Would not, it, it, think of a mailbox post. Okay. It's set up that. So, day. so once, and I'm all for support for uh, helping uh, the project. But then they have something with that kiosk in the front at one time for books or there literature. There is one side of the kiosk has like shelving, almost for like magazines or pamphlets. Um, that is there. To my knowledge, that's never been used for books, and we want to specifically market this for um, for book purposes. Could the could the kiosk be uh, used that area, the back part, or not? I it could. Uh, it would only hold probably a dozen books. Okay. Well, listen, I would like to see a drawing. If you could come up with a couple drawings and then come back to our meeting, and then I think that. Uh, we need to see something, uh, maybe where, what it would look like uh, on the elevation, and bring it back to us, and uh, we'll make a decision for you. Great. Any other questions? Colin, you still in school? Yep. What grade are you? I'm a junior. Where? 
Uh, Perryville High School. Is that your mother behind you? Yep. She teaches there? Yep. Your dad teach there? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Are we familiar with them? I work with, the, I work with the parents. I, they're both science people, but <laughs> I support you whatever you do as the mayor was saying when you come back. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Earl, you have anything to see me? No. Robert? No. Except say the Rotary Club had a great outing last week. Um, Alicia was involved in that. You were one of the chair people for the uh, for the outing. Great job. Mm -hmm. It was great weather and Patriots Glenn, thanks for hosting it. <coughs> well good time was had by all. And I want a big old basket of stuff. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> Another winner. And you can share with any of us. <laughs> Very good. Uh, well this is the time we open up the floor for anyone that has anything to say for the good of the town. Anyone out in the audience? Aaron, you got something to say this evening? Sure. All right, come on down. Thank you, Mayor Alton. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. This is um, quite the ambiance coming here tonight, and uh, I love what you've done in a place that seems like it's twice as big, um, which is kind of cool, and I, and I love your TV. Um, please e express to uh, Commissioner Brunel, who she has uh, another good time on her vacation, and uh, she is definitely missed. So, as my name is Aaron Wright, as the Chairman of the Behavioral Health Advisory Council, um, I did give Michelle copies. We did have a listening session here um, to just to hear the new, new needs of the community as far as behavioral health challenges and concerns. Um, you know, the services are kind of lacking, and thank you, uh, Commissioner Gibbons, for attending the one in Elkton. We will be having our next one in Port Deposit. Um, it's at the Community Connecting Us building, uh, which is 99 North Main Street, Port Deposit. Uh, there in Maryland, Michelle, I, I believe I also did email you a color copy for giving you the black and white. Um, and what's that date again? It is Thursday, November 12th. It starts at 6.30. The doors open at, at 6. The Cecil County Health Department will also be providing pizza and or Hobies, whatever the case may be. Uh, another update I kind of want to give you guys is the Behavioral Health Advisory Council has created what's called subcommittees. One subcommittee is for advocacy, which I, I do believe Susan Brumell from the Health Department, I'm not sure if there's relation there or not, she will be heading up that. And then Kathy Glace uh, and the handsome gentleman all the way in the back, uh, Angelo, will be doing a re-entry subcommittee. And that subcommittee meets the, for the first time this Friday at the Voices of Hope building at noon? 10 a.m. Mm, 10. 10? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Uh, so if you'd like to be part of that subcommittee, please come out, uh, you know, show your support. If you have anybody else, family members or community members that want to be part of that subcommittee, please reach out or just stop by. The address is 227 Howard Street, Elkton, and again, that's 10 a.m. Uh, at the Voice of Hope building. And that's it. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron, you said Thursday the 12th. Is it Tuesday the 12th? It might be. Okay. We don't have a day on here, but I thought it okay. might be Tuesday. Yeah. Thank you. And you're glowing. Congratulations. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'd like to announce that I'm going to be a new grandmother. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Dan, we received your email on uh, the update on all the trash. I'm sure, uh, I think Commissioner Broom will certainly want to kind of comment it back at you. Uh, but uh, we'll get uh, everyone take a look at that. And uh, if you have any questions or concerns, get with Don, Dan, send him, a, send him a note. You'd like I commented back to him. I don't know whether you all received it or not, but uh, include me in that. This is coming that. that that was right. I think it was you that commented. Right, yeah. It was you that commented. It wasn't favorable, but it was my opinion. <laughs> well, listen, you commented. Thank yeah, you. You're right. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience? Anyone on the Zoom meeting? Uh, I have one last comment. I don't want to jinx it, but uh, there's a very good chance that maybe on Friday uh, we settle on the Holly Hall property. Very possible. Yep. Fingers crossed. And uh, that'll be, uh, I would tell you, uh, it could be a stellar piece for the town of Elton as you enter into the town. But it's going to take uh, a lot of volunteering. It's going to take a lot of dollars. Uh, but I think it's... Uh, something is going to be worth it for the community. No question about that. Uh, Excuse me, Mayor, while you're bringing up Holly Hall, what are your plans for it? As of right now, there's there's things that we can't do based upon the agreement with the uh, Big Elk Mall. 
Uh, but uh, really, I, I would tell you that uh, it could be a fun game that we could put together to see what we could do. My vision, uh, quite frankly, I'd love, there was some discussion early on about working with Cecil College and maybe making a culinary school. You know, with the amount of uh, restaurants that we're getting, maybe there could be a way that we could, uh, 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 the, the property can have another wing as long as it looks like the wing that's over to the side. Yeah. And it can be a modern wing as long as it uh, uh, looks like the exterior of the building. And maybe you could put a nice kitchen in there and uh, uh, make it a culinary school. So there's no restriction on making it a, a commercial building? Uh, there's, there's certain things that we can't do. To, we can't compete with the big alcohol. Oh, okay. So I wouldn't think we'd put a shoe store there, or a, uh, but we could probably definitely put a restaurant. We could do a, uh, uh, a meet and greet area. There's a lot of things we could, mm -hmm. there's more that we can do than we can't do. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, I'd like to ask the board, we're going to uh, go into closed session, and I think we're going to have John attend, Michelle. We've got Lewis will be on board. We've got Kimberly Men, Jennifer, uh, and Joe are both on. I've been asked everyone else that's on the Zoom meeting to uh, to close out, if you could. Mike, I'd actually like to ask you to go out the other room, and if we have any questions for you. How do you do? Okay, very good. I appreciate it. Do uh, we have a motion to close the meeting? So moved. Uh, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. And a second. Uh, we're going to have a meeting to consult with council to obtain legal advice on a, I guess, on a legal matter is what it's about. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we will not reconvene.